Welcome again to the complete free flasher course presented by yours truly, Ovidus Mazurum. So in this video, we're going to carry on with what we were doing last time. Specifically, we were here. We have built this segment and I challenged you guys to build this next part here, which of course is quite similar. And I hope you guys found it okay. Um, hopefully it wasn't too easy. Hopefully it wasn't too difficult. But now I'm going to show you guys how I would do it. So I can imagine many of you just took the important parts here and just copy pasted it. And if you do want to do that, that's fine, but it's not the best way of doing it. Remember we spoke about code duplication before, and there is a lot of code du duplication between these. The image is in approximately the same place. The, um, you know, the icons can be actually identical, just going to have a different function and the price is going to be the same place but different value here so the best way of doing this is pulling this out into its own widget and we're going to pull it out starting from the column here so i do still need the expanded outside i do need the layout builder on the outside and a row on the outside because it's inside of this row that i'm going to have one item and then the next one here. So I'm going to pull this out. And you can see one of the nice things about the bracket colorizer is it gives me this small line here so I can follow it all the way to where I need to end. I'm going to cut this. And then outside of this, I'm going to make a stateless widget. And I can call it, I don't know, image tile or something like that. And I will put the underscore at the end because this should be a private function. Put my semicolon instead of the comma, then control shift I to change it. Then back here inside my expanded layout builder, I'm going to make an image tile exactly like this. And of course, this is going to give me a few errors right now because I just copy pasted everything. So for example, here I have height constraints the max height, but my image tile here doesn't know what the constraint is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a final double height. So when we create this, we're going to have to pass in the height. Control click here, create constructor for final fields. And now here I can use height. And going back here, I'm going to have to give it a height of constraints dot max height times and I think I had 0.8. There we go. Next, I'm also going to want to change this part because I want different images for, you know, <laughs> the different images. So I'm going to give it a final string, uh, image string or image path and control click generate constructor. The reason I'm doing this again is to add the image path here. And now I'm going to copy this and go back to my image tile and go image path and copy that. So now I can get rid of image path. I can get rid of this and replace it with image path. Uh, the next one's going to be a bit more iffy because we're not really using it yet, but I do want you guys to get in good habits. Next, I'm going to give it a final function callback. And let's do this favorite callback first. And while we're here, I'm also going to give it a final function add callback. So you guys can imagine the same way that I'm using string and double as types here, I'm using function. So favorite callback and add callback are going to be two functions, which I'm going to run when my two buttons will be pressed. So the favorite callback is going to go where the favorite icon is, which is here. And in fact, what I'm going to do is use it as an arrow function and just say, uh, just call favorite callback directly. And then for the add callback, I'm going to go down here. 
So it's going to be inside my inkwell. Yeah. And you guys can imagine that although right now the only thing we're doing is printing out uh, that you know the button was pressed, in the future this callback could actually add the item. It could make this favorite button you know, actually add it to my list of favorites so I could access it more easily or anything like that. Okay, but now that I have this, the only thing I have left is price here. So I'm going to go back up here and have another final double price. Again, control click, generate constructor. That's going to make this for me. And then here, instead of 15, and this is going to look a tiny bit strange. I'm going to use a dollar sign and then price. So remember, we spoke about this. The dash dollar sign here means give me an actual dollar sign. But this dollar sign means put this variable inside this string. And now I just want to make one more small change. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to hit Control D again and again and again. I'm just going to type it here as well. Highlight this, so this keyword, and then press Control plus D. What this does is it selects similar things. So now you can see I have all five this is selected. And I'm going to hit the arrow button to go to the other side. And here I'm going to type at required. So this at required is something we haven't used before. What it's going to do is it's going to give me an error if I try to use this callback or this uh, class without giving it all of these. So now if we go up here, my image tile, you can see the parameter add callbacks required, favorite callback price is required. And the reason I'm doing this is because to display this image tile correctly, I need all these variables. If somebody tries to call this, uh, this widget and not give me all these variables, it's not going to look right. So I'm just trying to force people to do things the correct way. So I'm going to control click, add required, control click for the next one, for the next one, control shift I to format it for me. So let's start with the price. Uh, I'm going to give it 15.00. For the add callback, I'm just going to say print main item added. And this should actually be a function. Same here print main item favorited and I have an extra bracket for some reason save it and now when I refresh it nothing's changed so you might think why did we do all that work then well now look at this I could write all of this with this many lines of code instead of having all of this. So that means that now when I try to make these smaller images, it's going to be so much easier. I have my first one here. And then I'm going to have another column here. And the reason I'm going to do a second column is because I need a column for these two. Right. So this image tile and this column is inside a row. And that row goes this way. So now I'm going to have my column here, which has children. And my first one is going to be an image tile. And now look how easily we're going to do this. We're going to say height. And of course, this is going to need to be a bit smaller. So let's try a height of a constraints dot max height. We're going to have to play around with this probably. For now, I'll try exactly half image path assets slash images slash makeup two I think it was add callback it's going to be an arrow function print second item added favorite callback can be another arrow function print second item favorited and the final one the price um, 75 bucks Makeup is expensive, apparently. 
I'm so glad I'm a guy right now. <laughs> I don't have to pay, pay that much. Okay, but now we have this. We can add one more image tile, height, and I'm just going to copy paste all of this. I'm going to use here makeup free. Here, instead of second, it's going to say third, third. And the price they have listed is 55, another expensive one. Save it and refresh that. And look at that. Writing so little extra code, we were able to get all of this. And there's something even more beautiful about this, which you'll see in about two videos time, but I don't want to ruin the surprise for you yet. But okay, we can see this isn't quite perfect. Um, this image is a bit too big given what it, what it is. So why don't I try 3.5 and 3.5. What do we think? I think that's about right if I compare it to this. I think his one is a little bit bigger because he has a bit less space between it than I do. So I'm going to move this up to 375 and I'm going to go down here into my image tile and I'm going to change the size box here to be 5 instead. Refresh this. Okay. I don't quite like it. <laughs> uh, so let's try 370. or even three, six. But in fact, I'll put it back on three, five because one of the things I forgot is I wanted a size box between here and here. I'm gonna give this a size box of, and make this have a height of 10, refresh. And maybe that looks better, maybe not. I'm gonna have to give it a padding on the edges soon. But for now, let's accept it this way. So rather than giving a padding on the side here and trying to guess, what I'm gonna do is go to my row here. You can see, even though I pulled out quite a lot of pieces, it can still be a bit difficult to find the right place. Um, this is why pulling things out is really good. So I'm gonna give it a main axis alignment of main axis alignment dot center. Try like that. Yeah, I think that looks a bit better. I do want some padding here. So I can do it a few ways. I could go into my text at the top. So I'll just use control F to find. Cosmetics everyone loves. And give this a bottom padding of 20. Maybe this looks a bit better. Uh, I do want this to be closer here. So I'm gonna have to change this to maybe 8.5. Let's try four. Save. Too much. <laughs> this is what being a front-end developer is like. There's a lot of fiddling, fiddling around with different numbers, trying to get things to work exactly the way you want them to work. And yes, yeah, a constant change of value, refresh, change of value, refresh. And the really nice thing about Flutter is that the Flutter framework makes it very, very easy to do exactly this, change something and refresh. Before Flutter, if you didn't have hot reloading, you would actually have to recompile everything to see your change. And that would just be a huge headache. Imagine trying to make these small changes like that. But leaving that aside, I think this looks really good now. I think these almost match up. What I'm gonna do to make them match up is change my size box here. Uh, maybe seven, maybe eight. And yeah, I'd say that's uh, about it. So if I compare it here, it looks pretty much the same. We can see that I do have a slightly different color here than his one, but I do think my darker color is better because it's more clear. His one is not quite so easy to see. 
Okay, so we're going to end the video here. In this video, we did cover um, a few more things. We pulled out this image and we made it easy to reuse the code, which is something you guys should definitely be thinking about, code reuse, making it easy to make changes and that kind of thing. In the next video, we're going to go over this bottom segment here. So we're going to make this container, which is interesting, and we'll need to learn the stack to make this image kind of overlap the container, but also the background. So that's going to be really great. I'm looking forward to that. In the meantime, myself, Avidius, I'm out.